to choose your own adventure, the observability odyssey. Meet Hero. Hero is application source code on a developer's laptop. Hero longs to be a real application running in production, serving end users, and we're going to help Hero on their journey. So my name, oh, we're going to help Hero navigate hundreds of CNCF projects, choose which ones to use, integrate them with one another so Hero can live their dream. My name is Whitney, this is Victor. Together we host a streaming show called You Choose on Victor's DevOps Toolkit YouTube channel. We have some stickers to give away after, so come to us. And each episode represents a system design choice. And so for each episode, we gather all the relevant CNCF technology that can do that thing. We have a guest on from each technology, and each guest gets only five minutes to present about their technology. Then at the end, we have a vote, and whatever the community chooses is the one that we implement into our ongoing demo. So based on choices the community's already made, we have a demo environment going now. So it is made up of an AWS EKS cluster that's defined declaratively with cross-plane resources. It also has our heroes already deployed in a running application, and it was deployed with GitOps, with Argo CD in particular. We have Ingress already running, and we have Contour because that's what you chose. And so therefore, end users can already access the application. So Hero is living their dream. They are running in production. What are we doing here? We're done. Okay, we don't have any observability. It's hardly a production cluster at all. So we don't know what's happening with applications. We can't understand our system. If something's broken, we don't know how to fix it. Hero is not doing well. So we're going to save the day. Please get out your phones. Please scan this QR code. We're going to go through some system design choices as part of the talk today. And whatever you choose is the one we're going to implement in our ongoing demo. Maybe. So we're going to talk about metrics. We're going to talk about traces, and we're going to use that data to implement progressive delivery. So, and we're going to help Hero live their dream. So let's start with metrics. When we vote in a while, I'm going to talk a bit first. When we vote, it's going to be between Prometheus and Pixie. But first, let's talk about what is metrics. What is a metric? A metric is simply a numerical measurement at a point in time. And so an example would be how long a database query takes or how many users are using an application. And oh, Hero just made their first metric. Isn't that cute? <laughs> So the thing is, all the applications in the system and all kinds of other things in the system are all creating a lot of metrics. And you need to actually be careful of how many you make. So our tool, regardless of which one you choose, its job is going to be to collect the metrics and then store the metrics. And then we can access the metrics and do stuff. So we might query the metrics. We might turn those queries into visualizations. And maybe we'll alert, depending on the tool. So let's talk about Prometheus first. How are Prometheus metrics generated? Hero wants to know, and so do I. So he, Prometheus is ubiquitous, ubiquitous, excuse me, it's very widely used. So our third party applications are emitting metrics right out of the box without us doing anything. And then the, our internal applications, we need to instrument them with the Prometheus library so that they create metrics. And then there are other things, too, that don't fall into those two categories. So for example, you might add an exporter to export metrics for nodes. So to get metrics for things that don't um, do it natively, you're likely to have an exporter that already exists. There's like hundreds of CNCF. Uh, excuse me, Prometheus <coughs> exporters. Another one would be one for cost, or one that will show you, Kepler will show you what kind of energy use, usage you have. So Prometheus collects all those metrics. It's called scraping. Scrapes the metrics at a regular interval by default once a minute. And then, and then Prometheus, oh, there we go. Prometheus stores the metrics. It ingests the metrics, which means putting it into storage. And you might do something here, like transform it or filter it. And then we can use PromQL to query the metrics. We can use a dashboard. We have to use a third-party dashboard to visualize these metrics, because Prometheus doesn't have one. And then we can also make alerts with Prometheus alerting. You can make an alert if something bad happens. Or you know, why not make an alert if something good happens, too? You know. 
so Prometheus is designed to, to run as a single standalone instance. And problems start to happen if you run a lot of instances of Prometheus. So it's hard to query data, not hard, impossible to query data across instances unless you have a federated uh, Prometheus deployment where you have a centralized Prometheus instance that scrapes all your other Prometheus instances. The problem here is that Prometheus is slow to query super large amounts of data. So it's not a great solution. Prometheus also has short-term storage. You store data for only about two weeks with Prometheus. It's configurable. But again, if it's too long, then you have the, the, the big data problem. Um, it does have availability, but not in the most elegant way. You can use two instances per, of Prometheus to scrape the same data. And then it's uh, not good for multi-tenancy. So we got problems. It's, not, it's hard to manage in a centralized way. And so that's why we have CNCF projects, Thanos, and Cortex to solve these problems. So they can do global querying in a very performance way. You can also store an unlimited amount of data for an infinite amount of time. Of course, there's some cost there in terms of infrastructure, but you know, you can. And, um, and there's also multi-tenancy, and finally, high availability. Both of these tools do that. The big difference between these two tools is simply the way they're deployed, and, oh, Kiro's happy. Um, and Prometheus uh, works alongside, excuse me, Thanos works alongside your Prometheus. It's ideal if you already have a big Prometheus footprint. And Cortex has a completely separate infrastructure um, uh, architecture. And P Cortex can receive data from Prometheus from Prometheus's remote write capability, but it also can receive uh, data from open telemetry. And then it's really solid in a multi-tenancy use case. But why am I talking about that? I don't know, because we want to know about observability. What we care about is, Prome is Pixie, because that's the one we're going to judge. So Pixie is a newer project, and what it does is it, um, it allows you to within five minutes, collect tons of information about your applications without you having to instrument your applications. And the way that works is with eBPF. So on each node, there'll be a Pixie instance running, and on, at, the, at the kernel level, it's generating and collecting metrics for you. And it collects a tremendous amount of data. Uh, it collects... Um, protocol traces and network information and uh, resource metrics. And you request, you can collect full request and response bodies here. And so you have to be careful. Pixie's gonna naturally keep all the data on the, on the node it's collected on, which is important because there's uh, sensitive data that, that Pixie collects. But when you query Pixie, you, the, the distributed nature of the data is, is invisible to you. You can query it with a Python-like query language. It also, Pixie Cloud has a good UI. And finally, Pixie data is only meant to be held for 24 hours. It's a, it's a tremendous amount of data. It's meant to be used for real, like, short-term debugging, not long-term trend data. And that's Pixie. It uses about 2% of compute on a node. And now, finally, it's time to vote. So what do you want to see Victor demo? Hmm. It's not a popularity contest, by the way. Wow. It's the one that you want to see demoed. It's I've, the one I've, you're curious I've, I've about. There is not a single person at community boot of Pixie right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I represented your project well, friends. <laughs> okay, let's do Pixie then, I guess. A pixie it is. Okay. So, Pixie, right? Um, some things I already installed, some things I didn't. I installed Pixie in advance mostly, and this is to you, Pixie lovers, because it takes like infinite amount of time to install it. Uh, Wait, what? I said less than five minutes. You said infinite amount of time? Huh? I said less than five minutes to install, and you said infinite amount oh, of time? Oh, it's more than five minutes. <laughs> it's more than five minutes, but I did not want to mess up with you. So uh, you can use web UI with Pixie. I'm not going to do that because I don't like web UIs. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, use CLI for that, right? Because it's absolutely awesome. And Pixie, and for example, I can say, hey, give me the list of scripts, right? And I can create my own scripts 
that we visualize and show data in one way or another. Uh, those are the scripts that come out to the box. Uh, and of course, you can create as many as you want. They're actually relatively easy to learn and all this stuff. So I can say, Pixie, uh, how about I run the script px namespaces and you see um, what's going on. Let me make this slightly smaller. Is this still readable on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah cool. Right? And then you see the information about uh, the namespaces. This is how much. Okay, let's make it, uh, okay. Uh, this is how much memory it uses, you know, stuff about namespaces. If you're unsure what you wanna do, uh, you can say, hey, uh, and let me execute a custom command and that command will be help. And then you can see uh, the, the, all the parameters, um, input parameters you can use to, to do something. And I can say, for example, you know what? I'm interested only in the namespace production, and then, um, namespace, production, there we go. And then you have CC all the metrics, all the stuff that, again, you're choosing what to show and when to show it and how to show it through the scripts, right? Uh, and we can do funky stuff like, hey, instead of run, uh, let me show uh, what is going on in the namespaces. And uh, I get, uh, this is the script, right? This is basically what uh, powers the queries, the, the dashboard that you saw before. And again, you have web UI, so all of you have worried that it's all black and white here. You, you can do you can do click ops. That's fine as well. Uh, and the last thing I will show about Pixie, because we don't have much time, is that you can do live as well and say, hey, I want to see uh, namespaces. Uh, I can see live information about the namespaces as they're happening uh, in my cluster. If it decides to work, right? And th th those are my namespaces. This is live data. I can change it. Right now, we are uh, seeing the process stats overview. We can switch to the namespaces, lists, and so on and so forth, right? A bunch of scripts, highly extensible, works from CLI, works from Web UI, which I'm not going to show you. And that's Pixie. And by the way, whomever of you voted for Pixie, you made a huge mistake. <laughs> Pixie is awesome. But you'll see later why you made, why you made a mistake. <laughs> I'm warning you in advance that this is going to be shorter demo than it's supposed to be. <laughs> May I have the slides back? Uh, so demanding. Yeah, Victor and I, we each have our very separate parts of this, and we don't know what the other one's going to say. So that's the first time I've seen the demo too. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> so next we're going to talk about traces. So for this one, our vote's going to be between Jaeger and Zipkin. So what is tracing and why do we need it? So when a user makes a request, uh, tracing helps us see how that request moves all the way through distributed architecture. So we can see the whole end-to-end -end transaction. And then when talking about a tr uh, tracing too, each step of a trace is called a span. Um, so why do we need tracing? So we can learn from metrics that something is wrong, but we don't know what that something is without tracing. Tracing shows us the why. So tracing helps a lot, definitely if there's like a, something broken that we can fix, but also tracing can help with latency problems and, and help improve performance, understanding which components are lagging. But before we go through the two different tracing projects, we need to talk about open telemetry. When I was learning about observability, which was recently, you could probably tell, um, it, observability was, uh, open telemetry in particular, was really hard for me to wrap my head around. And that's because open telemetry is made up of so many components, and a lot of people will just call them all, each one of them open telemetry, so you don't know like which thing they're talking about, and that is uh, difficult for a noob like me. 
So open telemetry above all is a specification. There are hundreds of markdown documents in the open telemetry project that's gonna tell you about all the different data specifications, all the different um, exporting, like storage, transport specifications, metadata specifications, um, the other components that I'm about to, there's specifications all around that. There's a, there's a lot to specify and they're finding every little bit. Um, so the next thing it is, is it's a, pro, it's a transport protocol. So OTLP is, um, so there's specification around how telemetry data should move from component to component. And then it's also software, but it's not just one piece of software, that would be too easy. It's lots of different kinds of software. So Open Telemetry has language specific APIs that you can use to instrument your applications to emit telemetry data. It also has SDKs that receives uh, the telemetry data from the APIs and does cool st stuff. Most notably, it can correlate all the data that's being emitted across your, your cluster so you can get a holistic picture of what's going on. So logs, metrics, and traces used to be called the three pillars, but now they want you to think of it more as like a braid of data that's tightly correlated together through this uh, system. And then the third piece of software that someone might be talking about if they just say open telemetry is an open telemetry collector, which is a telemetry data pipeline for how to receive, transform, and export data. So why am I talking about that? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. First, Jaeger. So Jaeger is a, a, a tool that is, does, it's a distributed tracing tool that helps you collect, store, and visualize traces. And Jaeger V2 just came out a couple of days ago. And with Jaeger V2, they used, okay. So they used to have agents and a tracing SDK and all, a bunch of Jaeger specific stuff for collecting trace data. And now with Jaeger V2, they've junked all that and they, they're like, we're all in on open telemetry. We're using all the ways that open telemetry collects data and that's what we're gonna receive for, for Jaeger. So that's uh, the biggest differentiator of Jaeger, and Jaeger also has a superior UI. It's an opinion, but I think it's, uh, I don't think anyone's gonna argue with me. Zipkin is, um, it's also a tool that helps you collect, store, and visualize traces. It has the exact same outcome. It's an older tool, and it, uh, does it rely on any other project it does, that does its collection. So it has a, a extensive support for all kinds of libraries and frameworks. And those are our choices. What's Jaeger or Zipkin? It's so quiet in here. I like that you're taking it very seriously. No, I'm still trying to identify that person who voted for Zipkin. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> they want to see that? <laughs> <laughs> All Kidding. right. Uh, okay, so it's Jagger, and a good choice because Zipkin is not in CNCF, so I wouldn't demo it anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, here I have the Argo City definition. Basically, this is uh, the reason why we're going to use Argo CD is because that's one of the previous choices. So this demo is always using whatever people chose before, right? Not my choices. We're using Argo CD. I'm just going to copy this uh, file, uh, Argo CD Jaeger, uh, to the this directory where everything is kept, and git add, and git commit, something, uh, something like this, and git push. Uh, okay, and now a few moments later, let me see, the Argo CD should kick up and should do it. Let me just double check quickly whether it got it. Refresh, so it didn't wait. Okay, Jagger should be coming now. And if I open, uh, where is it? Jagger.ingress host. I think this should be the address. And still waking up, starting, there we go, right? Now, nothing is being traced right now because we need to instrument our application. That's what we're going to do next. Uh, and our application is defined as YTT, again, because that was the choice. Uh, I'm just going to change uh, one of the values. And there we go. And I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say auto uh, enabled. 
Ah, enabled to true because I configured the Carver YTT to understand what that means, and you will see the outcome of that in a second. I'm going to generate my YAML files, uh, file YTT schema, and file uh, YTT resources. What else am I missing? Data, values, uh, is it values or value? Values file, uh, which is YTT values prod. Uh, must be missing something else, probably not. We'll find out. Uh, <laughs> in one moment it will not work. I will generate YAML, put it in the, this directory prod up. Cool, and I'm going to show you the outcome. Um, what the heck? Okay, uh, here's the... Uh, here, here's what it was generated. Basically, there is nothing special. The only thing I did here is that I told my um, application to be instrumented because it's in Go to be automatically instrumented where to find uh, Yager, and now it should work. Let's see. Add, commit, something, push, uh, cube, cuttle, dash, dash, namespace, production, get pods. You see this one? The first one that has two containers should have three containers um, very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to speed it up. Uh, come on, go there here. I'm going to go back to Argo CD, find my application, CNCF demo. There we go, refresh, no time to wait, cool. Um, let's see whether it was not yet, come on. Ah, there we go. I was about to say it, I expected to fail somewhere in the middle and this is the right moment, but it's working. <laughs> there we go. And if I go back to Yager, and you see here there is CNCF demo, I can see the traces, I can see what's going on. You don't see much here because this is not now real production and traffic and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not allowed to, to, to do something in the terminal while she's talking, she wants to see the slides, so you will not see the traffic, but you should imagine that there, there will be some circles and colors and stuff and you will see everything related to traces. No time to lose, go. <laughs> We have, what, 13 minutes, Whitney, come on. <laughs> so next, uh, next is progressive delivery. So we're going to talk about Argo rollouts and Flagger, which is part of the Flux project. Uh, while she's talking about those two, you who voted for Pig Pixie, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is progressive delivery? So progressive delivery is the act of changing, giving traffic to a new version of the application, rolling out a new version of the application in a slow and gradual manner, thereby reducing the risk. And so Kubernetes does this natively a little bit. Kubernetes does have rollouts as part of the deployment resource. But the problem is that it's coarse grained. It, it depends on the number of pods you're running. There's also, if it's, you're rolling out a bad version of the application, it's just going to plow ahead and just keep rolling out that bad version of the application. And, and there's no automated rollbacks. So our hero <coughs> is ready to upgrade, as has a dream of becoming a new application, and we're going to help them out. So Argo rollouts and F Flagger are both very similar projects. They're architected differently, but they both do uh, progressive delivery in an automated way, and they both can handle <coughs> advanced deployment techniques. So what are advanced deployment techniques? An example of that would be a canary deployment, where you have a second copy of the application going, your newer copy of the application, and you give a small subset of users to that newer application. And then with our tools, we can do automated checks, and we can use this observability data we've been collecting to do automated checks, <coughs> say yes, this is going well, and then give more traffic to the new version of the application, and in doing so, slowly roll out that new version of the application. And if our checks fail, we can automatically go back to the last working version of the application. So metrics you might check would be like, make sure we have at least a 95% uh, success rate with our requests. Or it might be like, if our, if our request takes more than X amount of time, then roll back to the old version. That would be a failure uh, condition. 
If you can't do canary, so the, the, this is a blue-green deployment, but canary's a superior. But if for some reason you can't do canary because your application can't handle running two versions at once, you might consider doing a blue-green deployment, which is also supported by both of our tools. That's when all of the, you, you have all of your data to the old application, you run the new application alongside of it, you do some testing to make sure that new application's working, and then bam, turn all the, app, all that, the traffic to the new application application. You keep that old one running for two reasons, to, to finish serving whatever requests happen to be happening at the BAM moment. And for the second reason you would do it is in case something's bad, we can quickly send all the traffic back to the older version. So both of these do that, but there's very, and they, they're architected differently. So under the hood, they're very different projects, but it practically, um, in a practical way, they're very similar projects. The difference is that Flagger by Flux, it, um, you can roll out from a Kubernetes deployment to another's Kubernetes deployment. And you could do that very successfully and with lots of uh, advanced deployment techniques. And then with Argo rollouts, you can do that with Kubernetes deployments, but you could also do it with any resources. So if you've built a, a cross-plane API, you can roll out from one cross-plane API to another cross-plane API. So any two Kubernetes resources, you can roll out from one to another with Argo rollouts. Um, they both can play well with each other's GitOps tool. They both can be enhanced with Service Mesh. And of course, they play best with their own GitOps tool. And that's it, that's enough. Let's vote. And then Victor will shame you. <laughs> well, you're voting, by the way, neither of those two work with Pixie. <laughs> Without witchcraft and wizardry. And today, <laughs> that's not going to happen. OK, can we say rollouts? Yes, one? Argo rollouts. OK, so uh, let's see. What can we do? First of all, uh, uh, I'm going to. to, 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 to this file, right? Um, I'm going to deploy this. Uh, this is a file that defines the, the analysis that will be performed to decide what to do with the release. And it's a very, very simple one, only one query. Basically, you can translate this, give me the rate of all the requests that are not 500 and 400 range, meaning all good requests, and divide it with all requests, and you will get some percentage, and if that percentage is higher than 95%, then it's success, then it's okay, right? Essentially, if 95% or more of the requests coming to the application are okay, continue, otherwise go back. Relatively simple, straightforward, nothing special. Now, the first thing we need to do is to install Prometheus. <laughs> uh, and I really don't like this because it's a very, uh, Okay, you know what? I have it written somewhere. The command is too big for me to type it. Uh, I have it somewhere. Imagine that you're not watching my notes and that you think that I actually know all this by heart. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, where is it? Jager, what did you choose? Argo rollouts, there we go. Here's the command, okay, cool. Uh, you haven't seen that. I actually know everything by heart. There we go. Uh, this will install uh, Algo, it will install Prometheus. It will take a while. So you're going to sit here in silence. <laughs> and if you want to blame somebody for silence. <laughs> Pixie? <laughs> I'm kidding, Pixie is amazing, I love Pixie. A great tool, by the way. Just it, it's not uh, supported, at least not out of the box with Argo rollouts. So, um, I have a joke. Okay, so uh, look, how about this? Uh, we have not much time. While this is installing, we can do one question. Oh, that's great. Anybody has a question? Anything? They're like microphones you're supposed to step up to. Life, universe, anything. No? No. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's one. Okay. Does rollouts really work with any API? Because it uses the pod template and requires replica sets. So the cross-plane thing is kind of like a new thing to me. It's like, ooh, that'd be cool if it does do that, but I've never seen it. Does, does rollouts really work with any two APIs? Almost. Almost. So uh, it works with any, uh, any resource or custom resource, uh, but there are, uh, that custom resource needs to implement a couple of fields. I think that it needs to implement status 
and I don't remember what else. So uh, it works with every custom resource or resource that implements certain spec, but I, I don't remember from out of my uh, head. Oh, look, thank you. Which mm -hmm. one it is. Uh, if you ping me later, I can find you what exact spec that is. OK, it's installed. Cool. Uh, now we are going to copy uh, this Argo rollouts Istio uh, definition to infra. Uh, I'm going to go with Argo rollouts analysis. That's the, that's the analysis I showed you earlier. And we're going to edit, and we're going to commit. We're going to push. Uh, cool. And then uh, a few moments later, we should see the analysis, uh, get uh, cluster analysis template. Uh, we should see it here in a cluster. It's not appearing because uh, where is Argo CD? Wake up. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy to do all this while people are watching you. <laughs> OK, come on. And then Argo CD dies on you. Yeah, let's see whether it's working. OK, here, oh yeah, connection broken. Let's start the connection again, cool. Uh, let's see, OK, yes, refresh, refresh, cool. Uh, not cool, yes, <laughs> analysis is there. <laughs> just starting, just starting. OK, I need to modify my application. Uh, YTT values prod, the same one as before. I'm going to say that uh, I already did this. I just need to, I created the templates and everything. I just need to say progressive delivery um, and uh, enabled through. And what else? Uh, type, uh, because I prepared for both occasions, should be Argo rollouts. Cool. Um, and no, oh, one more thing I forgot. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Not nowhere. I'm going to set the number of replicas, uh, replicas to zero. My application will not have any replicas because Argo rollouts will manage the replicas of my application. And then I'm going to execute the same YTT thing to generate YAML. And that YAML, now we have virtual services that, that's from uh, Istio that will control the traffic. How much goes here? How much goes there? Uh, what else do I have new here? Uh, I don't know. I, I probably have some things new. I just don't know what it is. Uh, anyways, it should maybe work. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> git add, git commit, git push, go OK, uh, pa, pa, pa. And then I can say cube cuttle argo. OK, let's put it to the top. Cube cuttle, ah, ah. cube cuttle argo. Rollouts, uh, namespaces, production, no, only two dashes, namespaces, namespaces, production. I want to get rollout called CNCF demo and I want to watch what's going on. Cool. <laughs> Let's see, maybe Argo CD did not yet pick up my changes. Maybe it will never pick up my changes. Let's see. Yes, OK, Woo! it's going on. Now, first release means nothing, because first release will always be deployed, because there is nothing to go back and all this stuff. So this will be also almost instant. Um, and uh, if we start, let's do this. Uh, let's do hey. Uh, I'm going to bomb my application for 60 minutes uh, and send requests to my application to kind of simulate traffic, uh, Istio host. Uh, let's see whether this works. Do I get uh, error? No. Why no error? No error. No. What's going on? Okay. Uh, let's see. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Think fast. Think fast. Think fast. What, we have what? two minutes, so we're in a race yeah. against time. Curl. Sure, let's see. Uh, cube cuttle get gateways uh, everywhere. What is the gateway? Since you have the gateway, okay. Virtual services. Services. Dot a. Um, yeah, OK, this is the address of my application. Copy, copy, and then send a request. Uh, no, wrong one. OK, uh, <laughs> curl, uh, CNCF demo, uh, 52, 71, 2, 3, 3, 47, <laughs> what? Uh, nip.io. What did they do? <laughs> 
Yeah, it works. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, does it work now? Uh, did I make a mistake here? Uh, okay, I'm gonna say, hey, uh, does the 60 minutes send request to this thing? Is it working now? Still not working. Unsupported protocol, yes, HTTP. Maybe it will work, who knows? I'm disappointed. Is it working now? Yes, 200 responses. Okay, it's working. Uh, now we're going down. Uh, 37 seconds. Okay. Okay. This is going to be fun. Vim, uh, uh, YTT, values, prod. Okay. Uh, what did I want to change? Yes, image tag is going to be, uh, we're going to change to tag two. New release. Cool. YTT, generate YAML. Cool. Uh, add, commit, push. <laughs> Go back to Argo CD, refresh, <laughs> because you have no time to wait, see what's going on. Uh, Argo rollouts, is the new release coming? Is it not coming? We will never find out. I have zero seconds. It will work eventually. <laughs> Will you put the last slide up, please? <laughs> okay, you want? Yeah, sorry. Uh, we have you choose stickers up here. You don't even have to talk to us, but if you want to talk to us, we'll also hand you a you choose sticker. And if you see us around, please say hi. Thank you so much. Oh, the you wait, wait. You can scan the codes for you choose and for a, a repo that Victor's pulling all these commands from. So we have a whole you choose repo that you can mess around with. It's halfway done, you know, but we're trying over here. It's a lot. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. you.